You're, you're, you're tuned into the stellar, stellar award winning internet radio station. You're at the right place at the right time. Yes, Lord Radio. Hold up. Wait just a minute. It's Roz on your radio. Yo. Keep it locked right here. Showcase fellowship inspired. Show, 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 show. show. Showcase. Hey, it's Roz on your radio. Show, 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 showcase. Showcase fellowship inspired. Yes, Lord Radio. Now it's time for another Yes, Lord Radio exclusive. Hey, everybody, it's Roz on the radio, and you're listening again to another YLR exclusive. My guest today is ministry leader and author, Dr. Kyle Champion, who is here to share his book with us, Exiting the Wilderness, God's Plan for Us to Repent, Conquer, and Prosper. Uh, First, Dr. Champion, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I am so glad to have you because I, I'm really waiting to get into this book. And the, one of the first things I want to cover, though, is the cover. I think it is so interesting that you have this man um, who seems like he's kind of rough around the edges and he's walking alone and you can see where he's headed, but you also see what he has to go through. So first, tell us about the cover. Oh wow! The, you know the the cover um, basically just tells the story um, of you know just you know just is real life. Um, mm-hmm. You know all of us you know want we we want our lives to be to be a blessing. You know, and so a lot of us, depending on where you come from, you may be in a situation of loneliness, of abandonment, and you know you find yourself walking through these rough parts of life. Mm-hmm. And but at the same time, your vision is casted you know somewhere like, you know where where blessing is, and so we're always finding ourselves trying to walk towards blessing. Uh, sometimes we don't necessarily know how to get to that blessing. So, we you know, we end up taking a, a, a route of, of, you know, turmoil and, and just, a, you know, a bunch of just, you know, mess along the way. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we have that, that, that thought process of um, just, you know, wanting to get towards, you know, blessing and where prosperity and success is. And so um, a, a friend of mine, a great friend of mine, uh, Michael Thompson, who's an artist, I basically just gave him a vision of, what I wanted this book cover to look like, and he just took it and, and, and ran with it and did a good, such a great job with it. I love it because it's like a real time, um, whatever we're going through now, and it reminds you of things that we've read about in the Bible days. Absolutely, and you know, you see, you, you see that there, you know, there's the um, the seas departing, and you know, and uh, I, I spend a great uh, part of the, the first three chapters of the book really explaining um, the children of Israel and their walk through, you know, the wilderness. Mm-hmm. And and explaining like you know what, what that what that time represented, and there's a, a scripture um, in the Bible in First Corinthians ten where Paul is explaining to the church of Corinth about how though the time of Israel, the children of Israel's journey through the wilderness was supposed to be an example for us, so that we wouldn't fall into the same temptation. So you know you see the you know the water departing for the man who's walking, and it, you know it's kind of the same way where when we focus on God, He begins to part the sea for us as we go on to our promised land. I understand also that you are speaking from a place of having lived in and gone through some wilderness. This is not just a, a book that has just popped up overnight, but it is um, it is from your years of experience and your level of faith with God. Can you share with us a little about that? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's funny, but you know, the book is not even really a, about me, but there was um, there were some liberties that God had given me um, to become very transparent mm-hmm. uh, with the readers. And I think that's important because, you know, when, a, when, a, when there's a book like this that really exposes, um, you know, our, our idiosyncrasies and exposes our flaws, um, you know, you want to be able to, you know, tell people a, a place of testimony of where you came from mm-hmm. um, and that everything's not going to be perfect, everything's not going to be pretty, that there's going to be some ugly parts of that walk. And so for me, you know, there have been just, you know, times of, of me growing up. And even after I accepted the Lord as my Savior back in 96 when I was a a uh, sophomore at the University of Miami, that there were still some some um, rough around the edges parts of my heart that had mm-hmm. to be dealt with over time, mm-hmm. and I made a lot of mistakes. And you know, in, even in my you know my late adulthood, you know my my early thirties, that I look back on and it's like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I you know I did that. You right. know, but it just goes to show you we always have we always have to be at a place of repentance. We always have to be at a place of just like Lord, like forgive me, and and really just you know this thing is a work and it's not just an easy walk. So um, yeah, I want I definitely wanted to um, you know, give my readers that side of me so they can see that okay, look, this is not a, a, a book that's going to point the fingers at you, but at the same time, it's going to expose truth, um, just about our apathy as a people towards God, but at the same time, give answers as to how we can 
come from out of this place of, you know, living, you know, living below standards and getting to a place of living, you know, in our in our godly identity. Yeah. The crazy thing about it is you can't judge a book by its cover. So as you look at the book cover, you're thinking, oh, is this my chance for, you know, you to inspire me to move from a place of poverty and to a place of wealth? And then you see this big, you know, the parting of the sea there. And you're like, wait a minute, I got to go through all that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and that's, and that's the thing. I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of books out there and I've, you know, I've heard, you know, uh, a lot of Christians and, and just people who are trying to find answers mm-hmm. uh, come to a place of like, well, you know, it's this thing all about, you know, us becoming successful. It's all about us becoming um, prosperous. And, and it's not necessarily talking about a place of wealth. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just talking about, uh, you know, just a place of sovereignty in your mind. Um, you know, when you talk about the wilderness, you know, it's, it's really a, a mindset. It's a wilderness mindset. And there's um, a lot of uh, misconceptions that we have. Um, when we're coming up and, you know, just because of the way we've been conditioned as a people, depending on what neighborhoods we grew up in and, mm-hmm. you know, who are our parents, who are, our pe- you know, who are our peers and people that basically influence us. So a lot of times as we're growing up and we're coming into the truth of Christ, we have to um, shed some of those beliefs, um, yeah. those things that we grew up around. And we realize that once we um, begin to shed those things that we knew to be, you know, familiar to us and those things that we knew to be true, we, re- we recognize that, man, like, this is contrary to God's word. And yeah. so now I have to go through all of this muck of, you know, shedding this thing off of me. And, and you know, and, and it's, a tough, it's a tough place to be when you're walking through that because God is, you know, he's teaching you. And a lot of times, you know, people, um, they misinterpret um, the place of the wilderness as a place of punishment. Mm-hmm. When really, you know, when you go back and you study Exodus 13, the Lord wanted the children of Israel to go to the wilderness because he wanted them to sanctify him and to, and to learn of him. So mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't um, at the beginning a place of punishment. It became a place of punishment when they couldn't, um, you know, get their faith to a place of moving forward. And, you know, the thing about the wilderness is that even if we, you know, stay in the section where they have this promised land, they were almost there and they still couldn't get there because of their disbelief, their lack of faith, their, you know, their whining and complaining, which is the very very thing that we do today. Yes. You, you know, what's funny. Um, I, I'm, I'm in church yesterday and, uh, um, and, and the pastor's talking about um, just, you know, Job and, um, you know, Job was, you know, got to this place, you know, he was a righteous man, you know, did everything right. Yeah. But even, you know, he got to a place where he started murmuring and complaining, you know, and the Lord basically had to rebuke him and he did it with 70 questions that Job couldn't even answer. And so, you know, there's a place where, you know, God does tell us, you know, where, you know, he almost gives us that disposition of like, you know, hey, like, you know, it's time for you to pull up your pants, be a man, um, and stop all the whining and complaining mm-hmm. and, and really just get to a place of worshiping and trusting me that I'm going to bring you through this. And so, um, you know, there is a time where, yes, you know, the wilderness is going to be tough. It's going to be, um, it's going to be some challenges in our life. It's going to be a lot of, um, you know, just hurt. I mean, like we look at our world today. You look at the, you know, the the world, you know, the the tornadoes that tore through uh, more Oklahoma. You yeah. look at the shootings in New Connecticut. I mean, and there's so many questions of people really wanting to know, you know, why do all these bad things happen? And you know, this book basically um, exposes that. It, you know, it, it helps you know get us to a place where we can um, begin to understand the answer as to why the Lord allows you know suffering. And, and we learn that um, as He allows suffering, it's for a greater part of our growth in Him. The book is uh, broken up into four sections: God's purpose for the wilderness, and then you focus on the relationship with God and our keys to exit the wilderness, and then you talk about restoration. So kind of break that down for us. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so that, so that first section, um, you know, you know, once again, I wanted to, I wanted to basically just come out with the, the question, you know, the answers to why God allows suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times, you know, people, we, you know, we, they find themselves um, really struggling to get to a place of believing and trusting yeah. and knowing that God is real and knowing that he's, that he's able because they see so, you know, so many things. So nowadays, you know, for the, you know, for the modern evangelist um, trying to, you know, witness um, it, it's hard because, you know, you have to, you know, you have to come up with some answers, you know, and he yeah. says in first Peter three fifteen you know, always have an answer for the hope that's within you. So I wanted to, uh, come out immediately and say, okay, look, here's, you know, here's the deal. This is why a lot of these things, you know, end up happening. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, a lot of times, you know, we, we can attribute it to, you know, our sin, you know, from the beginning of time, you know, from the garden of Eden on to now, you know, mm-hmm. every decision that we've made, it has, you know, consequences. 
Um, in addition, sometimes, you know, it's, it's because of other people's sins. Yeah. Um, you know, we can't control that person who's, you know, driving, you know, on the road drunk and it ends up mm-hmm. injuring other people, you know, that have, you know, nothing to do um, with their folly, you know. And then um, at, at the same time, you know, once you get to that place of, okay, like now, you know, God allowed these things to happen because of X, Y, and Z. Now I wanted to explain, like, okay, like how, how that relationship part, um, you know, is so important because now, you know, when you become into a relationship with God, now you can understand why, you know, certain things happen and why he allows this to happen. Right. Um, and at the same time, even in that relationship, um, he can protect us. You know, he tells us in Exodus twenty three twenty five that if we follow him, he will take away, you know, our, our sickness. He will take away, you know, uh, you know, all this, the pain that we go through and that basically he will bless our bread and water. So there, mm-hmm. there is favor when we come into a relationship. Mm-hmm. And then the, the third part of the book just talks about the keys to exit. And it's basically like the things that we have to do um, because there's this, um, as I mentioned before, there's this apathy um, that we get. And sometimes the apathy stems from, you know, it, it could be from just, you know, what our family taught us. It could just be that, uh-huh. you know, we just don't know the answers to everything. So we chalk it up to, well, you know, that's just the way life is. But right. God, you know, he says that, you know, my perish for lack of knowledge. So he wants us to come into this knowledge. So our keys to exit basically come down to us learning his word. You know, Joshua 1, 8 talks about like meditating on his word day and night and that, you know, through that we'll have great success. Um, and then also talking about like just prayer, fasting, you know, which are two critical elements um, to us, you know, moving further and understanding God. And then once we, we develop that mind of Christ, we're able to walk through a world that's full of um, problems and, you know, and issues and still not be touched, but with the intent to help others get to that same place. Um, and I do believe that there is, um, you know, it's just me being an optimist, I believe that there's a place where, you know, God says, okay, look, you know, if you can get to this place, if you can draw near to me, you know, James 4, 8, he says, you can draw near to me, I'll draw near to you, mm-hmm. where if everyone begins to do that collectively, we're going to see the same thing that King Josiah saw when, you know, in First Kings 22, when basically the children of Israel were living contrary to God's word, the king recognizes it, he makes a decree, um, the whole land changes their heart disposition towards God, and then they move into a time of peace and just, you know, no enemies, no war, no fighting, and, and basically, like, it was just a utopia. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, you know, God shows us through parts of the, you know, of the word where if we follow him, that he will bring us into that type of setting. I love it. And I love how it is all so connected and intertwined, and people, I find uh, that they try to separate the wilderness from the relationship with God, from the praying and fasting. And then it, it's all so connected. It's all, it's all connected. And, and a matter of fact, you know, like I said, you know, he, he brings us into wilderness seasons, not to punish us, but really to get us to that place of praying, of fasting, you know, um, mm-hmm. of sanctifying him and, and getting to know him. And sometimes, you know, he'll bring us into that wilderness just to, you know, just to introduce us into another level of who he is. Yeah. Um, but the one thing I also want people under, the readers to understand is that, um, when he brings us out into the promised land, it, it's not intended for us to go back into wilderness seasons. What happens is, oh, you know, you look at the accounts of, of, of Israel, you know, they kept going back in because of disobedience. Yeah. So once there is a point we reach of, you know, success in him and, and, and prosperity, you know, he tells us, like, you know, look, don't forget that, you know, I'm the one that's given you the power to create wealth, you know, De- Deuteronomy 8.18. Yeah. So there's a place where... He wants us to get beyond all, you know, all of our, you know, our transgressions and really just live in a, in a place of worship. And we'll begin to see that favor and that legacy begin to um, form in our lives. We know where the generations that come after us will be living in the same type of, um, you know, just blessing that we had. And that's, mm-hmm. that's his intention for us. Mm-hmm. I, I really like the concept in one of the chapters. and It's called obedience minus my understanding equals faith. And I thought that was so funny because, you know, when I was younger and when I was inexperienced and when I lacked the relationship with God, I was always trying to find my own answers. And I was always trying to have an answer for everything. And as I grow closer to him, I realize I don't have to have an answer to everything. As long as I'm in a place of trusting um, in him that every day he's going to lead me to wherever he wants to go. But anyway, let me get off my box. I want you to share that with us. Obedience minus my understanding equals faith. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. You know, he, he tells us, you know, to lean not upon our own understanding. Um, and so, you know, when we begin to take away, okay, the things that we know that, you know, that we have a, a tendency just as in our human nature to be, you know, logical thinkers. Okay, well, yep. this doesn't make sense. And so I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. With the Lord, uh, you know, it doesn't always come out that way. You know, we'll look at things, and, you know, in our, you know, in our own understanding. We'll say, like, well, with God, like, you know, this would be the, the way to go about it. And he's saying, nope, 
you know, that's not the way to go. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I want you to do this first. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times, you know, we have to we have to remove our understanding from the picture and sometimes do what does not make sense. You know, perfect example was, you know, him telling Joshua, okay, I want you to walk around Jericho, um, you know, six times, you know, the, the, first, the first, you know, six days you can walk around at once. And then on the seventh day you're going to walk around seven times and then the wall's going to come down after you make a big shout to the Lord. Now, you know, at the same time, you know, it, to us, even sometimes when you, you know, in, in our maturity, when we read this chapter, you're like, okay, wait a minute, that, that does not make sense. Right. But regardless, to Joshua, he was probably like, okay, well, I don't understand what this has to do with anything about us moving into this land with milk and honey, but yeah. better yet, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, you know, when, when we're in the place and God is saying, okay, look, I know this is going to sound funny to you, but I want you to do this, we have to be obedient to that. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, we'll, you know, in, in our own logic, sometimes we can um, scare ourselves, you know, put fear into our own you know, hearts into, into making us do something totally opposite of what God wants us to do. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened to Jonah. You know, God says, go to Tarshish. I want you to go preach to people who basically are um, evil. Yep. Jonah's like, no, they're going to kill me. They're evil. I'm going to go away. I'm, you know, I'm going to I'm go the opposite way. I'm going to Nineveh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, so... So, so basically, you know, is you know, he he basically runs away, and and, and God, you know, um, you know, deals with him accordingly. So then he he ends up coming back and ends up you know preaching. Um, so you know, it's, sometimes it's the same thing with us. God wants us to, um, you know, get to a place where we can become obedient to Him and not necessarily lean upon our own understanding. And you know, and I've I've been through that in my life. You know, I think we all come to a place where it's like, okay, well. I want to do X, Y, and Z, but God is saying do this. And so I'm going to, you know, it comes down to that, that, that point of reckoning where we have to trust him. Now for you in, in writing this book and, and putting this all together, I know that it was inspired uh, by God, but tell us about um, uh, parts of this book that maybe speak to you more than others and why. Yeah, um, you know, I would say probably chapter seven um, is the, the place where um, the readers really get to understand. Me. Like, you know, I mentioned about you know my times of, of poverty and like you know, where God had me in situations where I had to, you know, sleep in my car and uh, you know just you know just going through a time of homelessness and, mm-hmm. and things of that nature and, and really just dealing with consequences from um, sins and bad decisions that I made. Um, but chapter seven um, really um, is a place where. Um, I really become open and uh, I become an open book, you know, no pun intended to the readers because I want people to understand that, look, you know, I'm not, you know, just this man of God who's speaking from a place of just, you know, just, you know, pure righteousness. Like there were some yeah. times in my life where um, I made some bad decisions. And I think a lot of times, you know, the church doesn't do a good enough job of really being transparent. You know, like, you mm-hmm. know, sometimes like, you know, the people see that, the past is as like, you know, this man who came up, you know, there was a legacy of godliness in his household and yeah. everything was just, Oh, you know, just glorious, you know, <laughs> right. but, um, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted the, I wanted the readers to see that, okay, look, you know, that, um, not, not, not everything about this man of God, um, is pretty. And I'm not going to sit here and, and, and give you, um, you know, a painted picture of, you know, flowers. Like, you know, I'm going I'm to show you the ugly parts as well, because I want those who had the ugly life to know that, Hey, that no matter what you did, that here is an example um, you know, a, a comprehensive, specific, you know, open book example of, you know, how you can move from one avenue to the next. Yes. Um, just, you know, just by simply just doing what God has, you know, called you to do and being obedient to that. Yes. And sometimes people don't get is that God, he showed us the ugly life of so many people in the Bible. And then we disconnect and say, oh, that was just in the Bible. That just happened to them. And then we don't want to reveal ourselves for the purpose of learning, right. not just, you know, getting in somebody's business, but to learn and to gain something from that. Right. And and, and that's the thing. Like, you know, like, I, you know, one of the things we, we have to always remember, too, is that, you know, every person that the, 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 the Lord showed us in the Bible had some type of flaw. Mm-hmm. You know, you saw, you know, you saw it in, you know, you saw it in David. Um, you know, David, you know, uh, committed adultery. And as a matter of fact, David broke every single one of the Ten Commandments. If you, if you study David's life <laughs> from, yes. from Daniel on to King. You know, he he broke every single one of the Ten Commandments, but at the same time, um, David learned repentance through all of that. Uh, You know, you look at somebody like, you know, Moses, who had a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. You know, Solomon, who loved many women, you know, who basically took after his father David. So, you know, we look at um, a lot of these men um, and women in the Bible, and, you know, we think that, oh, man, like, you know, they had it all together. Like, no, they they didn't, you know. Um, So, you know, we we have to do it at the same time, you know, just us being men and women of God. We have to also show 
our flaws and not be afraid to say, okay, look, this is what I did. And sometimes you may get people who say, we well, you know, start to question you, but that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, I, I would love it when somebody says, oh, well, you used to be a womanizer, you used to do this and that. Like, yeah, exactly, that's the point. <laughs> you know, I want, <laughs> I want you to see the ugly side of me so I can show you where I am now and how I got from being that person to, why, you know, to this person who you see, you know, speaking before you today. Exactly. Now, and that's why I like the whole concept around this book and the content of this book is because so many churches are preaching on prosperity, uh, not many preaching on forgiveness, and so few talk about what you have to do to go from that place of poverty to that place of wilderness. I mean, to I'm sorry, to from the wilderness to uh, poverty. I'm sorry. Look, skip that. <laughs> From the place of poverty to wilderness to wealth. They only talk about wealth. And right. I'm just wondering why is it, it? It's almost like it's a false, you know, sense of where we are today and where God, uh, you know, and, and all of the other principles that God would want us to remember on our path to prosperity. Yeah, you know, I, I, my my take on it is like I look at it like this. Um, you know, you have you know some coaches who um are very good at you know hyping their teams up. You know, yeah. you can you, know, you can sit in the locker room with you, you know with your teammate with your team underneath you, and you can give them a good pep talk. You know, a football coach, you know, basically is like you know with a good order, um, can speak to his team and get them all charged up. But if he's not good at teaching the X's and O's, yeah. you know, basically the team's going to go out there, they're going to get they're going to lose. You know, badly. Yeah. So, my thing is I want to teach, you know, people basically, okay, look, I don't want to just give you a pep talk. I don't want to, you know, that, that a pep talk can only last for so long. You know, you can get yeah. people riled up by, you know, yelling and screaming. I want to give you concepts. I want to give you um, the X's and O's of how to walk through life. And I think, you know, what's happened is I think a lot of pastors have gotten, um, you know, just so, um, you know, in tune with, you know, trying to keep their audience engaged that a lot of times they, you know, they get so, you know, they get caught up more on just like hooping and hollering mm -hmm. instead of the teaching aspect. And, you know, me, I'm, you know, I'm more of a, I'm more of a teacher and, you know, I just want, I want to see, you know, people's lives, you know, saved. I want to see people, you know, changed, but I want them to understand, okay, like, okay, what, what does that mean? What does that look like? You know, yeah. what does that look like in the 21st century? Because a lot of times people have this, this, this view of the Bible as an antiquated book, but being able to show them how the Old Testament and New Testament um, are, um, you know, intertwined in today, but then showing them how that, how it applies, you know, mm -hmm. taking a book from, you know, from, you know, first Samuel and showing them how that verse, that scripture right now is alive today, that, that God's word is, you know, it's living, that it, you know, it, it translates, you know, right. through, through all time. It doesn't just stop at, you know, um, the, you know, the, uh, one, you know, a 10, a 10 BC or, you know, our, our 72 AD, you know, <laughs> right. that, it, that it goes right now to 2013. Mm -hmm. And so we have to learn how to take this book, read it, and to, you know, understand that the Bible is revelatory, that it's not just, you know, something that you read from front to back and think that you're going to understand it. You're going to have to read several books several times throughout your life. And, you, and even through those times, when you read it over and over and over again, you're going to always find something new because, once again, it's a revelatory book and it's one of those supernatural things that God has to, you know, reveal to you in time. He doesn't want you to get all of them. He's, you know, he's infinite, you know, so yeah. he's not going to give him you at one time. He's going to give himself to you in settings. You know, he says, you know, mm -hmm. we, you know, we learn in part and we know in part and we prophesy in part. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with all of that, you know, we have to understand that, okay, we're going to take a chunk of this word, we're going to chew on it, digest it, and come back and get some more later on. Yes. You know? So that was, you know, so that was, that was basically my, you know, that my, you know, my take of it. Like when I see churches, like, you know, getting caught up in the whole, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to basically just preach this prosperity thing and get everybody riled up. I think, that, you know, there's a place for that, you know, somebody may be going through, but, you know, every Sunday, you know, no, you don't want to get, you know, you want to get your, your congregation, you know, caught up in a place of, no, you know, it's all about prosperity. No, no, God does definitely, you know, want to see us succeed. He wants us to prosper, but it's not about the wealth part. You know, it's not about, it's not so much about having more money, you know, later on. Um, you know, he doesn't want us to, you know, be, you know, be in lack, you know, indeed, yeah. but at the same time, he wants us to learn of him and that there is, um, you know, there are some incentive based things that God does, you know, he does, you know, plant for us in this world, but, you know, to focus on the, the whole, you know, going, you know, from, you know, from a, from a, a two, two to a four, two, you know, house <laughs> in the hill is, um, 
you know, it's, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit beyond, you know, what what God is trying to teach us. You know, he's not trying to show us that, you know, he's really trying to show us how to walk with him um, and, and, and basically how to walk with him in, in lieu of um, helping others come to him, you know, really making this world um, about him. And so, you know, and that's the success. You know, when we look like the church of Acts 2, where nobody had lack, you know, it, you know, not everybody was living in the mansion, but at the same time, nobody was living on the streets because right. all the disciples kept giving, you know, of their own, like, you know, people kept selling houses, you know, for money and, and bringing it to the church so that other people can live, you know? Yeah. And, you know, we, we've gotten away from that. The church has gotten away from that mm-hmm. um, collectively. And I, so I think, you know, now it's really a time for us to really take that Acts 2 approach and come back to that. And that that's really, the you know, going from, you know, from the wilderness to the promised land is when we start to look like that again. Yes, I love it. Well, Thank you so much, Dr. Champion, for sharing with us today. We got to get out of here, guys. But before we do, of course, you want to know what you thought about this conversation. This book to me and to you, you will see is life changing because I know some of you out there right now are in the wilderness or you've seen the wilderness and you jumped out and abandoned ship and abandoned God. But now is not the time to do that. And so we want to know what you guys think about it. Leave your comments on the YLR shop box. Join us on Facebook.com and Twitter.com for the conversation and also for the recap of this show and more. Visit me online at RosalindRadio.com and Dr. Champion, of course, let everybody know how they can stay connected to you and get their own copy of the book. Absolutely. A couple of things. Um, My website is TheBrokenPulpit.com. And you can actually um, um, you can um, order the book from there. It's an it's an ebook. And one of the things that a lot of people don't know about ebooks is that even though if you don't have a Kindle or a Nook, you can still download it onto your Mac or PC. Right. Um, I have the links to the free Kindle app on my website. Once again, that's the Broken Pulpit uh, dot com. Um, and they can also stay in contact with me on Twitter. Um, that's Doctor Champion zero one D R Champion zero one. And I, you know, I'm out, I'm basically always leaving, um, you know, just you know, words of affirmations for my followers, and just really wanting to see people just grow. So connect with me. Awesome. And I was going to ask you about the broken pulpit. That is so interesting. Tell me a little about that before we get out of here. Um, the broken pulpit is is basically just, um, you know, it's it's a, a website. Um, that, that was derived from just, you know, um, wanting people to know that, look, this is not one of those things where um, I'm, you're disconnected from the person or, you know, or, the, or the, the minister, you know, that, that's, you know, that's speaking to you, that it's, it's a place of humility. The word broken, you know, meaning just humility. Not so much the, the pulpit being broken, but that the person behind um, the, the pulpit has been, you know, through a place of brokenness. So, you know, come connect and, you know, come, come get edified. Come hear the word. I, I post blogs on there daily. Okay. Uh, fresh content. There's videos. There's words of affirmation. Where you know you you were gonna be given like a two or three minute sermon on you know just specific topics. Mm-hmm. Um, they can come there and just you know just read and learn about my new um, upcoming books that are you know a, a few ways you know a few months off in the future. So okay. um, yeah, it's just a place for them to come and just you know really come and just you know, take part of the blog se- sessions and and uh, just to know who I am as well. Okay. All right, cool. Well, thanks, guys, so much for joining us again. This is Dr. Champion, author of Exiting the Wilderness. We'll see you guys next time.